and I actually dropped out of, of college to pursue this because it just started to take off. As crazy as it sounds, I decided to leave college because I didn't want to end up broke. But I know you're <laughs> supposed to go to college to not be broke. But I know that sounds so dumb, but I, oh, yeah. I, I, no, no. I knew it was going to lead me down a path of being not happy and having to pay back big student loans. Um, I gained a lot of it from the school of hard knocks. So having to do with people t- you know, taking uh, money away from me, bad situations, and then realizing, you know what? The one thing I can always do is I can invest in myself. Mm-hmm. I can sit in my mama's garage when I was young and make YouTube videos for days, especially this is the time when you didn't even have th- those commercials or click past five seconds. So you mm-hmm. can get all the organic traffic in, oh, that yeah. you wanted to. Um, even to this day, the greatest thing I could ever do is just bet on myself. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. My name is Tyler Harris. We've got Daniel Davis. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Yes, I love it. Appreciate that participation. (laughs) So this is episode 46 of the Sales Wolves podcast. Uh, I'm going to go through real quick why in the world it is that we do this podcast. As you guys can see, we are missing my my other half here that's normally on the podcast, but we've added uh, a guest on that I'm super excited to get to here in just a second. Uh, But why in the world do we do this podcast? The Sales Wolves podcast exists for two reasons. Uh, Number one is to provide appreciation and support uh, for salespeople. Sales uh, is one of the d- most difficult, toughest jobs that you could ever have, careers that you could ever have. And it's our belief that everyone, no matter if it's your job or not, is actually in sales because at the end of the day, you're selling yourself in anything that you do, either selling yourself to do something or selling yourself to someone for them to do something. Uh, and we just want to show appreciation because we appreciate and respect every person uh, that's out there in sales. And then the second thing is to actually provide some tactical, strategic things that you can actually take from the podcast, implement into your life, and have that uh, be impactful uh, in many different ways, whether that be actual tactics on sales or whether that be something that you can just take into your everyday life, personal or professional, uh, and make your life better. Our goal is just to provide value. And like always, we don't want anything from you in return. That's the ROI is for us to actually be able to provide value and someone get something out of it. So that's the only reason why we do this. Uh, But we do have a special guest on Uh, Today, we're going to allow him to uh, introduce himself here in just a second. But what I would love to do, love to do, is have him uh, play a little bit of of, uh, music for us. Because uh, as you guys will see, uh, what you're about to hear is going to be pretty incredible. So he's going to start off that way, and then we'll go go ahead and jump right into his story. Love it. 
That was incredible, man. So it is like the most refreshing thing for me to be able to watch or hear someone that's operating out of their purpose and passion and talent and abilities. Like it doesn't happen all the time. So man, I'm so grateful uh, to be able to bring you on because that's exactly what you're doing. You're, you're making a business out of your passion and out of what you were put on this earth to do. Uh, and it's evident the second that people hear you. Uh, so man, I would love for you to be able to give everybody just a quick introduction. Who are you? And uh, maybe tell us a little bit about your story, kind of go as far back as you want to and uh, figure out how in the world you got to be where you are today, man. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be speaking with you. I don't have too many opportunities where I can actually speak on uh, my life beyond uh, the music. I love self yes. podcast, the whole idea, the whole thing. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, but um, I go by the name of Daniel Davis from Charleston, South Carolina. I started playing the violin at 12 years of age. Um, uh, like you mentioned before, that is uh, my, my first passion. Um, I didn't like it at first. I really, really hated it. A friend of mine told me, he said, listen, D, there's this class is at the um, end of the day, and there's going to be lots of pretty girls in it. And that is <laughs> why I decided to take the class. Ended up failing that class for whatever reason, but fell in love with the instrument um, a little while later after seeing somebody else play the violin in a, in a unique way. Um, took lessons from different instructors and whatnot, and uh, I really wanted to pursue music um, after several years of, um, of just having the violin sitting around. And I just remember one particular teacher I had um, teaching me classical violin. And I just remember him just running around like a chicken with his head cut off, talking to his wife, who was also a musician as well. And they were talking about bills. And I was, I think, 14 or so at the time. And, and I didn't really comprehend that. But I just thought that, well, you, you know, you're, you're, you're an amazing violinist. You're an amazing musician. You know, why are you guys worried about bills? You're so good. You're so talented. Like, yeah. Why do you have to worry about that? Or even his car uh, would break down a few times before, um, uh, before a few lessons and whatnot. I would wonder, well, that doesn't make sense. You're so good. And at that moment, at 14 years old, my mind started to change from just being a musician to trying to understand, well, how do these musicians survive? <laughs> you know, how, how do they yeah. make ends meet and, 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 and whatnot? Um, I, I, I guess I was kind of blessed or a, a little lucky early on because I hated it, but it fell into like a job because one of my dad's friends was a radio DJ in Charleston. He called me up. This is back when Napster was big. Everybody was legally downloading everything including myself, <laughs> and, um, and he asked me, uh, could you um, come by and play a few songs at this wedding uh, reception, uh, please? This couple, they needed a, a musician, and uh, their musician bailed on them, and uh, I thought to myself, well, you know, this is better than flipping burgers at Burger King, you know, so I decided mm -hmm. to do it. He gave me a little a handful of cash, not much money, and uh, that was just another light bulb in my head that went off. I, I thought to myself, wow, I could actually make ends meet doing this this music thing this is kind of crazy people came up to me asking me um do i do you have a business card or whatnot and um then then the business mind started to roll again okay i need to get cards made um all while this is happening i realized that i could actually have access to any song i wanted through napster limewire napster <laughs> i'm ashamed to say i'm so sorry oh, yeah. all these sites um, but um, I started downloading songs, learning more and more. And then I think this is when uh, the, the uh, almost like the golden era era of flight. This is when YouTube had no advertising, no commercials, nothing. It just came out fresh uh, along with MySpace. And I just remember being bored and wanting to um, uh, record one of these songs. And, and I wanted to show my friends I didn't have a way to show it to them. And so I remember um, uploading it to YouTube. I was in my, my parents' garage, recorded a song, and just, just for my friends to see, not realizing that a lot of other people were watching it as well. And so uh, I started just gradually posting on YouTube over and over and over again, and I started to see people trickle in, and it started to, I started to realize I was building, I guess, somewhat of a following, uh, you could say. And so... Um, through YouTube and as well as MySpace. Uh, I had my little top eight of all musicians and whatnot. I was able to um, gradually start to build a following and it kind of, kind of turned into a little, uh, a, a little job. 
And like I said before, when, when you're young, you're 15, 14, 15, 16 years old, uh, it's much better than flipping burgers. <laughs> Absolutely. That's kind of where things kind of, kind of uh, uh, started. Um, I've had a few uh, uh, bumps in the road. Um, uh, YouTube allowed me to meet one of my first um, agents in the business. And um, I remember a gentleman out of Atlanta, Georgia, flying down to meet me just because he had seen me on YouTube. And he wanted to um, offer me a, a, a booking situation, just have me fly across the country doing shows and events. And he would take a certain percentage and whatnot. And that gave me a taste of, uh, of probably what I didn't like about um, uh, music, you know, following your passion. Because I was still in that, that um, uh, deer in headlights um, phase where um, I'm sure if you know of any other artistic people, they just want to do what they want to do. They don't yeah. want to think about the business. Side of it. They don't want to yeah. be a sales wolf. Like, they don't, you know, I just want to play. You know, I just want to do yeah. my artwork and whatnot. They don't, yeah. they don't care to learn about anything else. But if you don't, it will surely come and bite you in your, in your bottom. Mm -hmm. so, um, I had many rough situations contractually with individuals and having to take people to court and whatnot. Um, but, but just through the uphill battle, and, I, and both the, the times I've been to court, I have won. No money to show for it, but <laughs> I have won. But throughout these steady struggles, one thing that was always there is that is my, my right-hand buddy, um, social media. It was always there. It, it, from MySpace, I, don't, I can't tell you how I transitioned from MySpace to Facebook. Before we started going, I told you how I didn't even believe in Facebook. I thought Facebook, I was pretty young at the time, so I thought Facebook was for, I guess, college kids or something. Like, that was some sure. bad yeah. way. Like, you know, I didn't think it was that serious. And just gradually, I guess it just started to, to trump and, 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 and almost like, like, a, like um, cover up MySpace completely, I guess. I, I, I can't even remember mm -hmm. now. Now I can't even tell you the last time I've, I've been on MySpace, you know? <laughs> Um, uh, it's, it, it is, it is crazy, but, but yeah, through all those little trials and having to go to court a few times, I've, I've been blessed to be to have my family by my side. And then, um, just, uh, like I said, being more than a musician, I'm always all, all ears. I try to always listen anybody, anytime anybody says anything, um, that, that they think is new or on, on the edge of times and whatnot. I'm always right now with, with, uh, cryptocurrencies and whatnot, I, yeah. I'm always, been invested like a year and a half ago. You know, I was trying to stand up the curve of, of what's going on. That's one of my biggest things and giving me longevity thus far. Awesome. So, so where does the where does the business mindset come from for you? Is that from from schooling, or is that something that you just picked up along the way, having gone through those experiences and having been forced to learn the business side of of the music business? Yeah, you you know it. The second part you just said, the school of yeah. hard knocks. Now, yeah. That's where most of us tend to learn it. I wish, I wish college, um, and I actually dropped out of, of college to pr pursue this because it just started to take off. And yeah. it's, it's crazy as it sounds, I decided to leave college because I didn't want to end up broke. But I know you're <laughs> supposed to go to college to not be broke. But I know that sounds so dumb, but I, oh, yeah. I, I, no, no. I knew it was going to lead me down a path of being not happy and, um, and, in, in having to pay back big student loans. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah, um, I gained a lot of it from the school of hard knocks. So pretty much having to do with people, to, you know, taking uh, m uh, money away from me, bad situations, and then realizing, you know what? The one thing I can always do is I can invest in myself. Mm -hmm. I can sit in my mama's garage when I was young and make YouTube videos for days, especially this is the time when you didn't even have th those commercials or click past five seconds. So you mm -hmm. can get all the organic traffic oh, that yeah. you wanted to. Um, um, and so I knew I could do that. And then when Facebook came up, I, um, I realized, you know, the ability to be able to share Twitter, Twitter as well. Um, yeah. to, um, and so I realized that early on that, you know, I can just invest in myself and I will probably ha have the greatest returns. It will make more sense than me trying to put my trust into, into another individual. I, even up to this day, recently, um, I went and did a business situation with another gentleman. And um, I'm going to have to take this guy to court. <laughs> oh, I didn't lose as much on this deal, though. But, yeah. but I, I, and I'll probably still win it. But it still is taught me to this, it's taught me that even to this day, the greatest thing I could ever do is just bet on myself. Yeah. 
just you know using my own brand and whatnot and, and that's really where the the, the business knowledge has um has uh, come from i think it's, it is is ty lopez i think he did say something like that something about um you know if you don't know who the idiot is in the room or whatnot it could possibly yeah. be you or whatnot so yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. or if you're or if you're the smartest person in the room you're in the wrong room or or something like that yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's so interesting in how you just explain that the parallel to the business world from, from, a from the world as an artist, you, your strategy was like, the, it was just this content strategy. It always been back to the content, 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 content. And there's been times for even you know myself, I think, I think like when I, when I envision an artist, like when I see you like perform, I'm envious because it's so apparent that what I'm supposed to be doing is play the violin. So all of this stuff, it's crazy. All this stuff's going on. Like, let me just go back to playing the violin. Like that's like, that's where the money's at. Like that the money will follow if I just keep doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But the same thing is in the business world. Like things can happen, you know, all the different platforms change, uh, situations change, but going back to big, being able to put out content on a consistent basis, like we were talking about earlier, um, and just put value, 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 and mastering your craft. And ultimately the money will follow. Like that'll happen. Like if you become the best at what you do and you put it out there for other people to see, then it's just a giant net of law of attraction and it will attract people that like it. It'll attract like-minded uh, individuals. It'll attract business partners it'll attract opportunities and all that stuff just goes back to you remembering that like hey how did I get here oh yeah it's by playing the violin and it's by putting this stuff out there like let me just focus on that <laughs> you know right yes so yeah you're that's huge you're a, yes you're a hundred and you were doing it way before people talked about how to do it like way before people were you know having their ebooks on like how to, how to build a social how to build a personal brand online you were just doing it um and and for you it was just natural because it was hey i've got this this instrument i've got this tool this computer like how can i make these two work for me uh and man that's awesome so was there was there like a particular like can you look back and is there like one video particular that just like boom just like went crazy and put you on the map as far as like on facebook or twitter or any platform like that yes yeah i have a few uh, uh key moments um uh, and like i mentioned before pre-interview uh, i look at it just like a, um, a baseball player going up the bat you're gonna have a lot yeah. of misses but eventually you will get a few home runs and uh, yes yeah, so i've had about three videos on youtube i remember one video of um, a mix of like hip-hop records it only did um and this is pre uh pre-commercial youtube so back okay. back then a million views was viral now justin bieber gets what 300 is it 300 million or a billion yeah. now i think they're up to uh, right yeah. now um, but yeah, I had a few, um, I had a hip hop mix that I did, um, a mix of, um, uh, contemporary records, like top 40 records I did one time. And I do remember them both, um, getting uh, hundreds of thousands of views. I have uh, one video that has, uh, over a million views on YouTube, but it's more than just it being on YouTube. Cause that's not even, that's not even the epitome of it. It's the fact that it gets shared across other platforms. My yeah. Facebook audience trumps all of my other audience. Uh, like it, it doesn't make any sense. So these videos have done all right on YouTube, but it's the fact that they've done extremely well across multiple platforms. So uh, my Facebook uh, being shared through email, uh, back when I was playing a lot more heavier hip hop, but there's a site called World Star, uh, which I don't like to claim now because I'm all about nothing. All, all, only content I like to put out now is positive vibe. <laughs> That's my motto now. But, uh, <laughs> So yeah, I, I've, I've had a few, and even on Facebook, I've had a few short clips. It, it doesn't make any sense now. It, it's yeah. getting easier and easier to create good content because I remember on YouTube thinking I needed to have a full-fledged music video. Now it's mm -hmm. better just to have something just sitting on, on your couch at home, you know, or, or just or, or something more intimate. And it doesn't even have to be that long. And yep. you know, 90 seconds goes viral across Facebook and it's, it, it, it's unbelievable now. And you're doing a lot of Facebook Live, right? Correct. Correct. And that's, and that to me, it's the best platform there is because, especially for an artist like yourself, like you can only fake it for so long, right? 
<laughs> when, it, when it's live, like right. they're like, okay, how's this guy doing? And this is the fourth time I've seen him. It's incredible every time. Like obviously he's really playing this, and it's just got that like instant credibility. Um, but with also with the live, are you are you engaging? Uh, with your audience like are you engaging like in the comments I'm, ass- I'm assuming you probably get so many messages and and comments and people that are reaching out to you are you engaging with your audience a- absolutely engagement yeah. is key it, it doesn't matter how yeah. talented you are or how cool what it is you're doing is online but engagement really is um is key it's gotten to the point that i've h- hired somebody who um who acts as a content manager for me but uh, but ultimately i still only respond to my messages i'm still yeah. the um, I still try to make it as or, or organic and natural. Um, um, I don't want pe- people can see right through fakeness. I tell you that. Yeah. That's the thing I have yeah. learned. Be yeah. Right through that. Or you can put on the facade for long, but it won't last long, and your business will uh, will tank. Mm-hmm. But yes, I, I do have someone that helps handle my engagement. I always come go back afterwards and interact with people. I follow people up live and read comments constantly. And yeah. And, um, and, and that's, that's one of the keys, engaging. When you, as soon as you engage with the people that follow you, you are now putting your, um, your followers are, are now almost like your, your heroes. They, they want to feel like heroes, yeah. you know, by, by you making them feel special and whatnot, you know, shouting them out and commenting back. I mean, it's, it's, it's the ultimate thing. It, it, uh, Absolutely. What have you found? And, and this is, just, I'm just interested to hear, what, what have you found is the best, um, trying to think of how to even describe this the best scenario so if you just if you just popped up on on facebook live right now is it just you playing just by yourself are you doing collaborations with other people are you doing any type of like visual stuff going on while you're playing have you have you been experimenting with all that kind of stuff yeah i've been experimenting with collabing um with the just like my store my store and my live streaming has actually they've they were birthed around the same time, so about three and a half months or so. So I'm just now baby stepping into uh, stepping outside the box beyond just me playing my violin a lot. But um, I have an um, artist friend that I collab with. I'm actually, as I travel every weekend, I, I still perform in different cities and whatnot. And um, I'm actually competing now. I'm trying to see if my online revenue will eventually <laughs> over, you know, sh- overshadow my, my live revenue because it's starting oh, to do a, a lot. Awesome. But now, yeah, that that it really it really is a hard work and a, and, a, and a blessing. But um, but 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 yeah, that 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 is crazy though. I, I, I'm I'm working more and more. On I mean, it. I would think on a collaborations from a collaboration standpoint that there would be so many other influencers in the music space that it would be incredible for you to be side by side with online live playing while they're performing and doing whatever they do, whether that be painting or whether that be whatever it is that that person may do adding the adding the music to that is so incredible right here in in denver colorado i have a friend of mine that i collab with and it's incredible the engagement the how much more engagement i receive just by having him having him live so we're actually collabing a lot more we want to go live hopefully on a on a uh at least a monthly basis uh two times or so a month but i do want to um I've connected now with other individuals who do their own live stream shows. I'm talking guys that have commercials running in their show. Uh, awesome. I mean, they have the whole layout, you know? Um, speaking, uh, speaking of which, we want to uh, stop this uh, episode right now and tell you that Monster Energy <laughs> is the best energy drink of all. And this one in particular, no carbs. <laughs> wow, uh, now, back, back to our regular scheduled program. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm all about it. No, nothing, nothing wrong, nothing wrong with it. But, um, and it goes back to what you mentioned before, too. Um, just, you know, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you're, you know, I say if you don't have a, if you have a, what's the word, in, intangible, something that can't be grasped or whatnot, yeah. um, purpose, uh, the mo- money, everything will, will come. You know, you do it for the yeah. passion. You know, it, it, it will come when you, when you go live, you really are, you know, I, when I'm live, I'm not just trying to promote my projects or, or whatnot, my store. I'm really trying to connect with people. I'm trying to be that one space of the, the analogy I always use when I'm live is that when you're on, you open up Facebook on your desktop, you look to your left or your right, you see those trending topics. We always know what it is. It's something ridiculous with the uh, president, these, these guys with, sexual assault cases on the left and the right, you know, Korea or something. It's uh, racism and immigration and stuff. It's good to know what's going on in the world. 
but yeah. sometimes you need a break from all this stuff. Uh, so I yeah. look at myself as being a, an outlet for that. So, you know, when, when the video pops up in your feed, um, or now that like, I, I follow your, um, your, your Instagram. Yeah, I know when I see you guys come through my feed, it's going to be something that's going to, you know, get, get yeah. me going for the day. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and it's something that like when they see you pop up in their news feed, you know, it's going to be something that's going to give them at least make them smile for a second. Yeah, <laughs> like give them right. a little yeah, bit yeah, of right a break from like <laughs> the chaos that's going around. Hey, hey what are some um, little things that you're doing during like, for example, a Facebook live to really boost your engagement? Like, are you asking people like, hey, share this up or hey, like, you know, comment this if you want to do this or comment this if you want to hear this song or do you, are you doing any stuff like that to boost the engagement during live? That, that's correct. Yeah. Almost every time I take a pause, I'm asking people to share the video, um, tag somebody, hit the like button. I also yeah. acknowledge individuals who do these things. Um, the yeah, individuals really that go to my store and they go purchase. I will physically, even though it's, it can be obnoxious, but I'll physically put my finger in the screen, <laughs> point at that comment that's pinned to the top. Um, yeah. A good friend of mine who got me into Facebook Live, and he, he's a, she, definitely a social media guy. He, owns like seven, eight Facebooks. And he's told me how one key thing is you got to realize your followers, I don't care what you're selling, what your niche is, they are not going to be the brightest individuals. You have to step them. You have to walk them into the store, walk them to whatever it is that you're trying yeah. to get them to do or, or, or purchase. So I'm definitely big on constantly mentioning or asking them in the comments, you know, uh, you know, what, what's your favorite song? What, what should I play or where are you watching from? Is this your first time seeing me live? You just saw the yeah. video come through your feed. You were like, who in the hell is this in my feed? And next thing yeah. you know, you're still watching now. Because that's yeah. how we, I try to connect with them emotionally. That's how we feel. We're, anytime we see some foreign video, okay, what, what, what's this? And then, oh, I'm still watching now. So I make mm -hmm. comments like that. Um, uh, engagement, as far as getting people to comment, is a good thing, too, because that's what also gets the video more visibility. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so it is a sales podcast, obviously the sales Wolves podcast. So now you're quickly transitioning, um, especially with your, your store online and, and really trying to, um, transition, like you said, the money coming in online versus your live performances and being able to replace that income, uh, with what you're doing online, uh, would have been some of the biggest, obstacles or one of some of the biggest breakthroughs that you've had there, like the aha moments of like, oh, okay, this is what works. If I do this, what would have been some of those things for you? Oh goodness. Uh, every, <laughs> every sales 101, which I yeah. did not, I, I didn't know. I knew how to market my music online, build a following, but getting these people to make, um, uh, or is it called take a call of call to action, make a call yep. to action, or whatnot. I never knew anything about that. And I didn't really think it was a real thing. I was still caught up in the typical, oh, they'll just feel me when I play. <laughs> they'll just be drawn to buy everything and I'll sell <laughs> gold overnight. You, you know, yeah. I went to an art school with musicians and talent. <laughs> these, you know, hipster kids and these kids that just want it just to happen overnight. Art. <laughs> I was one of them. That, that was me. Um, you know, it didn't, didn't make any sense. But sales 101. Uh, so realizing that urgency really does make people want to buy. I didn't realize that. So my, by me saying only while I'm live, you will get X and X and X, or you will get this free download, or you will get this and that. Um, that makes a difference. Yep. Uh, trigger words, free, free mm -hmm. makes people go crazy. So I remember the first time I offered something for free, if they got something else and people were actually buying the thing that I was giving to them for free. But they were doing it so fast because I think they were so intoxicated with the word free. So I had people yeah. trying to, I just bought the, this album, but you said I get this for free. I'm confused. I think I made a mistake, you know? <laughs> That's how that trigger word really gets to people, you know? Absolutely. Um, um, uh, so making sure that, uh, making them feel like they're getting something and not just making them feel, but really giving them something of, of, of value and quality for a better deal. Yeah. Um, that urgency. Um, and then ultimately, like I said before, um, you, you, you have to um, offer them something that's going to elevate their lives in a sense. Mm -hmm. you know, by them get, you know, getting this music, they'll put, put them in a, in, a, in a better mood, better spirits or whatnot. You yeah. know, you know, when they're supporting an individual that now can come through their, their Facebook feed more often um, and give them that, that, that dose of, uh, of, of motivation that they may need for, uh, uh, for the day. 
Absolutely. So this is our New Year's episode of the Sales Rules Podcast. And you know what happens every year on the new year. You've got New Year's resolutions. You've got new goals that you set out. And it's so funny. I was just watching a video uh, from Andy Frisella. Actually, it was on his Instagram stories, but it was on this podcast, the MFCEO Project. This was one of my favorite uh, podcasts as far as for business. And he talked What's about called? it's called the MFCEO Project which stands for the mother effing CEO. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, but his name's Andy Frisella. He's the CEO of First Form uh, Supplement Company. He's an incredible, incredible guy. Um, uh, just has a gigantic business, huge, huge social uh, reach as well. But he... Um, he did this video and he was talking about, he's like, I'm so sick and tired. He's like, you see these posts come out right about now where it says, you know, 2016 was the warm up. 2017 oh, yeah. was practice. And 2018 is when I'm really getting in the game. And he was like, and all you do every year is just adjust the years on the same like, comment. Like you're saying the same thing every single year. Like nothing is going to ever change unless you change. Um, and it's always so funny. You get these big goals at the beginning of the year. And then what happens the next year? It's like the same goal and you never did anything in the me in the meantime, but, um, would love to hear from you. Like what are, what's, what's like the biggest goal? Like, what are you focusing on for 2018? <laughs> oh gosh, you, you were preaching to the choir, bro. Preaching <laughs> to the choir because I even like, now there, it's good to have resolutions, you know, because you, you're right. I, I actually want to, I'm glad you asked me that. Um, what am I planning for 2018? But it does crack me up. I have seen that meme or whatever with the warm up, et cetera, so, <laughs> so often, you know. Oh, and then yeah. I see the other memes of people, of the ones that make fun of people who had New Year's resolutions. But yes. they, so, you know, they yeah. have the ones that go against it. Mm -hmm. um, but my motto is to is to work smarter, not work harder. I just want to yep. work smarter, not harder. So yep. like I mentioned before, if I can sit at home and generate the same amount of revenue that I can, you know, make on the road, although it's good to have both. But mm -hmm. if I can sit at home and be mentally more at peace, maybe focus more on, on this and, and connecting with my fan base at home, uh, by all means, that is a in the sense working smarter, not harder. No airports. Yep hotels and and all these travel expenses and whatnot um so that that was really really my big model for um for next year as far as financial goals uh, i don't like to set real numbers because even when you talk about numbers the value of a dollar is different to different people um mm -hmm. uh, so for me you know I, I would love to you know make a greater percentage of returns every month i'm always trying to you know do, outdo myself from last month you know, or, or now yeah. quarterly, now having a store, you know, you look at quarters and whatnot now. Yeah. So I'm wrapping up my first quarter uh, pretty pretty soon. So I want to outdo for the next quarter and the next quarter. But yeah. like I said, next year, uh, just work smarter, uh, not harder. Yeah, absolutely. And so what we would love people to do is in the comment section of this post is we want to hear what your biggest goals are for 2018 um, and see how we may be, may be able to provide value for you uh, in doing that. So if you would comment below, uh, make sure that you put whatever your biggest goal for 2018 is. Uh, and I would love to hear that. And I love how you said you don't like to put an actual monetary goal. You know, one big um, thing I think people miss is in your goals, having an activity based goal, because at the end of the day, like whether someone on the other end buys or not, you can't always control that, but you can control your activity. Like if I say I'm going to make 25 phone calls a day, that's what would right. be an activity-based call. Now, I'm not going to say I'm going to sell five a day because I don't know if I'm going to sell five, but if I make 25 calls like I'm supposed to do every single day, then the right things will end up happening. Uh, it's just the, right. law, the law of averages. But So I love having you know activity-based uh, goals. And what you're saying is makes so much sense with what you're doing because I, I would imagine, obviously, living on the road, performing live, like that's it's exhausting. Uh, and, you, and, yeah. there, and there's a... There's a um, there's a shelf life, right, of, of how long you can do that. And, yeah. and that shelf life may be the number of years that you can do that, but it also can be the number of years based on, okay, will I do it, you know, this many times a week or this many times a month. That may prolong the number of years you end up doing it before risking any type of burnout or risking any type of uh, just getting uninterested in that whole process. Like the biggest thing that for me, like with artists, especially musicians, is like you can tell when a musician's on stage and they're loving 
what they're doing in that moment. You can also tell when the musician's on stage and they're just going through the motions. Um, but it's oh, so yeah. so funny with, with what you just said a second ago. It reminded me, there's this DVD I watched a long time ago. It was with Dave Matthews, and he was with Tim Reynolds. I think it was at uh, Radio City Music Hall. And he's like doing, he's just like doing this random little kind of like freestyle little little jam session. And it's what he was doing with the guitar was so basic, it, it, but it was unique. And he said at the end of it, he said, he said, my goal is to be able to get up here and have the stadium filled, play one note, and then walk off the stage and everybody to be happy. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I want to get so good. I want people to love me so much that they'll pay all this money for me to come in. I go on stage. I play one note. <laughs> And everybody goes crazy and nobody's upset. And it's just, oh, right. uh, like, that's the goal. That's the goal is to be able to make more by doing less. And one of my favorite uh, quotes of all times is if you do the small things now, like they're big things, then one day you'll be do be able to do big things like they're small things. Um, that's, that's just right. like, I love that. I love that mindset. Um, one question I did have for you. We ask every guest that comes on the show, uh, what their definition is for a sales wolf. If you saw someone, you're like, man, that guy is a sales wolf. Uh, what does that look like to you? Uh, sales wolf. Uh, good question. Uh, for me, that's somebody who can not only lock in, make the sale, you know, uh, but have the individual that they sold to feel a lot better uh, about themselves from whatever that you you've given them it's more yeah. than just a physical item or whatnot you know yeah. so afterwards because there's a lot of people in in the industry of selling but they're selling to a lot of people only one time because that person's not coming back again you know mm -hmm. you a lot of shysty individuals or whatnot but yeah. it's not only sell to them once but again again yeah. again 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 and again yes. and again and have them feel That's like value every time that's a great 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 definition that's a very different one than we've heard yet and and the the thing that's so important about what you just said is people underestimate the power of the long-term value of a customer yeah. Like, like yeah. with what you're doing, like the 99 cent download, the dollar 99 download, the one CD purchase, like that's nothing versus someone that it's like, like, I know Daniel, like, like me and Daniel, like, oh, let me tell you about Daniel. Like, I know, like, like, like they feel like, like, that's my dude. Right. And so they're going to yeah. come back over and over and over and they're going to share you with every single person they know. They're like, oh, what, what is that you're listening to? Oh, you don't know Daniel? Like, like that's, I mean, the long-term value, that doesn't even really take into effect the exponential growth from the sharing nature of social media, but just the long-term value of having someone come back and buy over and over again uh, is so important. And you're right. Like people will do anything to make that one-time sale. Uh, but yeah. if you can make someone feel good, like no one likes to be sold, but everyone loves to buy. That's a, one of my favorite quotes. Yeah. Like everybody loves to yeah. buy. Nobody loves to be sold. And with what you're I'll doing, that one. <laughs> yeah, so like, and with, with what you're doing, like our big thing is, is uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's big, you know, jab, 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 right hook the provide value, right. provide value, provide value, and then right hook to get them to buy something. It's exactly what you're doing because you're sitting there performing for free on Facebook Live or they're looking at your YouTube download or they're looking at this or that and their their lives are being enriched. They've been able to relax. They've been able to enjoy some downtime away from all the craziness that's going on in the world. And then all of a sudden when you get on Facebook Live and they're listening to you and you say, hey, go to my store right now and if you buy this, I'm going to give you this for free. And they're like, Ugh. Why would I? I've, I've literally spent four hours with this guy with all the content that I've listened to over the last year. Of course, I'll buy it. Like, why would I not buy it? Like, it's almost like you build up so much disproportionate value to where they feel guilty not buying it. Like, you're like, holy crap, this is the first time this guy's asked me to do anything for him, but I've been consuming his content, and listening to his music forever, you know? Right. So it's right. just, uh, I, uh, I struggled with that in the beginning with, with, yeah. the, with realizing that I had to, um, uh, even when Jason uh, sent me the email asking, you know, the, I guess, p three things I would uh, describe you, humility, it was really my last thing. And because I'm big on, people will know if you really have it like that. You don't have yeah. to really just do all this, mm -hmm. you know, people will really know it'll be, it'll be shown in, yeah, maybe your lifestyle, or even if they don't see anything of materialistic, you know, around you, uh, they'll know with how you carry yourself. Yeah. But so I had to, I had to learn that you have to, you know, uh, okay, um, go to DanielDMusicStore.com, 
if you go right now, you'll receive blah, blah, blah. I have to learn how yeah. to bring that out of myself um, because yeah. I didn't feel like I was being uh, selling people snake, snake oil. But if you know yeah. that you, know, you have, um, if you have you know, good quality content, you realize that people, it's like what you just said, people mm -hmm. want to buy. They actually yep. enjoy spending their money, especially when they know that it's enriching their lives, you know, mm -hmm. enriching someone else's as well. And then it strokes yep. their ego. Like I said, you make them feel like the hero. Oh, so-and-so yep. just made a purchase. Oh, thank you very much. You know, that, that makes them, mm -hmm. it's, it's all and psychology. It's, it's, and it's, it's all psychology. And especially when you have the personality to back it up, because people want to relate to real people. Like they want to, yes. they want to the purchase someone from someone that they can relate to. And with what you're doing with social media, it's like the perfect mashup because the average person that's not going to randomly go to to Amazon and search violin music, enter and like let me let me buy some violin music, but they stumble right. they somehow stumble upon a shared video in their news feed. They see you, they see you smiling, they see you talking, they see the way you go about doing your thing. And then they see that, oh yeah, and also the music is incredible. Well they'll buy from that person, you know, when they never may have had any interest in purchasing music in that genre ever before. But they're buying it for, they're buying the person, not the product, right? Like they're buying from you. They're not necessarily buying what you're selling. Uh, and I think that that's that's an incredible man. I'm always so envious of uh, of of artists because there's no more pure form of of value driven sales and there's no more pure form of someone that's living out uh, what they're passionate about than, than art. And, and I think it's just an incredible thing, man. So what I would love for you to be able to do is play one more song for us before we close out the uh, sales wolves podcast. I'll probably go ahead and close this out here and, and then we can just have you play as we, uh, as we trail off here. But uh, I really appreciate having Daniel uh, on the podcast. This has been incredible new year's podcast. Make sure that you comment below uh, with your goal, biggest goal for 2018. And we'll see if we can help you crush that. And Daniel, before you start playing, uh, let us know where they can find you online. Yes. Yes. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Daniel D. Music, um, interested in uh, purchasing any of my music, learning more about me, DanielDMusicStore.com, as well as um, uh, check me out on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash Daniel D. Music. Perfect. So this was episode 46, the New Year's first episode of 2018. And I uh, could not be more happy to have Daniel on the uh, show. And that's Daniel. I'm Tyler. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow. Ha, yes. And with that, Daniel's going to play us out here. And I hope everybody enjoys.
That is awesome, man. We appreciate you so much uh, for your passion for what you do. And uh, I can't wait to see some incredible things come out of you, man. I appreciate your time today. Uh, thank you so very much for having me. I look Absolutely. forward to chatting. All right, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.